Joining us now is Ale Kaweri. He's the Group Chief Executive Officer for QNB, the region's largest lender. The latest earnings then, uh, Ali, I'm just looking at the numbers. Uh, slower profit growth in the last quarter. Your net income, though, still met analysts' estimates. The big question becomes, can you stay profitable for the remainder of 2018? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, going back, I mean, I, I saw you the report by Bloomberg, you know, in, in this in instance. But I need to remind you with one thing, you know, I think you need to look at it from, you know, uh, removing the the devaluation impact of the Egyptian pound, you know, in our uh, balance sheet. If you remove this one, it's a seven percent growth, you know, uh, you know, uh, year in year in terms of like, you know, uh, revenues and operating income. Uh, you know, I mean, as far as the group is concerned, you know, we have achieved. Record numbers again. You know, uh, as our pro our profit is 13.1 billion reals. This is six percent up. Our uh, assets went up by 13 percent. This is 811 billion reals. Uh, our our loans went up by uh, by 12 percent. Uh, our our deposits went up by 16 percent to 586 billion reals. Uh, our equity uh, up by 11 percent. That's 79 billion reals. We, again, we have affirmed our position as the leading Middle East and Africa bank. You know, uh, uh, our yeah. brand value, and this is something maybe we, we, I mean I don't know if it went to the press. Our brand value went up by 10 percent to 4.2 billion dollars. Uh, this is you know the highest yeah. value brand, uh, banking brand in Middle East and Africa, and the second highest in Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Asia. So uh, again, good numbers, record numbers. You know, I mean, in terms of like, you know, I mean, our growth, this is right. in line with what we said in the beginning of the year, you know, in, in terms of expectations. Uh, well, you know, I mean, in terms of like analyst quarter by quarter, I mean, I don't see, you know, I mean, anything that, you know, you know, uh, that, you know, really. But, but in terms of overall performance, right. it's an excellent performance in any standards and compared to any uh, GCC bank. Yeah. Ali, uh, let me jump in here and just uh, get your feel for the remainder of 2018. I mean, you pointed out some of the pockets of strength in your balance sheet at the moment. Again, are you going to be able to continue being profitable? And how much growth are you targeting for 2018, 2019 going forward? I mean, just give us a bit of a preview of what's to come. Yeah, we are, we are on target for, and as per our strategy in terms of growth, in terms of like achieving, you know, the, the right numbers. In terms of growth, you know, for the, for the balance sheet, we're targeting 7 to 9% growth. In terms of profitability and bottom line, we, we expect 5 to 7% which is in line with our uh, strategic directions, uh, you know, 2020 strategic directions. You know, uh, this is so, I mean, we're expecting, you know, uh, a good year, you know, 2018. Uh, you know, uh, our diversification will continue. Our, our, our strategy will continue. Uh, we don't see any, any, any major issues there, you know, I mean, uh, in terms of, like, achieving our targets. Yeah. On that note, the last time we spoke, you were describing a new strategy where you were pushing more into Asia. You're looking at Hong Kong. You're looking at other places in Asia. How much of a priority is this continued to be going into 2018, 2019? And are there any new markets that you're perhaps exploring to offset some of the setbacks in the Gulf? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, strategy is the same. No change, as I said, no change in our strategy, no, no change in our growth targets. Uh, we continue to look to, to become a, a leading MISIA bank by 2020. Uh, uh, as, as you mentioned, you know, these markets, you know, I mean, uh, I mean the inland China is, uh, you know, to change our presence there to a full-service branch. Hong Kong, you know, we're looking to, to establish an operations there. We already opened uh, India. Uh, I mean, in terms of Singapore becoming our Asian hub in terms of, like, you know, offering all the products, all the services, you know, uh, expanding Islam into Islamic banking, asset management, private banking. So we remain, you know, focused on, for our strategy in 2020. You know, uh, this is no change, no deviation from this strategy. Our diversification is one of the issues that's very important for us and what uh, helped help us to grow, you know, throughout the years. And we'll continue our diversification. So you're going to continue doing more of that. Are there any new markets you're seeking to explore, perhaps pushing into new geographies further into Africa, perhaps anywhere else around the world that's on your map? In, in terms of Asia, as I said, you know, I mean, Southeast Asia is, is, is you know, a, a target market for us. We don't have any specific markets in particular, you know, in terms of, like, you know, targeting for 2018. But we remain opportunistic in terms of, like, you know, looking to opportunities around that region. Again, you know, I mean, we'll look at it, for, again, from an organic and non-organic uh, perspective. Uh, in terms, you know, I mean, in terms of, like, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll, try, we'll try to push more in, in our existing operations, especially in our three core markets, you know, Qatar, Turkey, and Egypt. 
uh, and also, you know, also to expand in, in Southeast Asia opportunistically as, the, as we speak. Would you say it's become more difficult to deal with the realities of the Gulf crisis? Would you say that the longer this drags on, the more difficult it's going to become for lenders like you to deal with? Well, actually, to the contrary, you know, I mean, uh, we are adjusting to the new norms. And for us, you know, we are operating, you know, our business as if this, uh, you know, uh, crisis will continue forever. Uh, you know, so we're assuming, you know, I mean, like, you know, business is, is a business as usual as, as, as for us. You know, I think we already absorbed the shock, the first, you know, one month, two months of the shock. It's, uh, this is already gone. And again, we are operating our business, we are operating our growth targets, our risk management, our, uh, you know, funding, our, our growth, you know, as if this crisis will continue forever. So, I mean, for us, I mean, this is, you know, I mean, and again, you know, I, I must yeah. say also one thing uh, important, uh, Yusuf, you know, here. We see also more opportunities, you know, going forward, you know, from, from, from the blockade, you know, happening, you know, here for Qatar, especially in terms of you know, the local economic growth. We ha the country, ha country has been very active in terms of, like, accelerating their 2030 vision and pushing very hard in certain lines. So we see the trades, for yeah. example, I mean, this is one of the booming areas here in Qatar, already trades restored to the pre-crisis level as of August uh, last year. Uh, we have seen also, you know, the logistics business is growing. We have seen also the transport business uh, with the Hamad and, uh, uh, you know, um, seaport. You know, this is, the, I mean, one of the state-of-the-art ports, you know, in, in, in the region. Uh, we have seen also uh, new trade lines created as, as, as alternative supplies for Qatar, you know, with the other countries, basically bypassing the re-export business and going straight to the source. So uh, we have seen, you know, also, uh, you know, uh, the food supply and, right. and the food uh, security. This is one of the areas, you know, Qatar has been also pushing very hard. So we see many opportunities, yeah. and I think this is going to even help us to prosper even further as far as QMB strategy is. The other uh, takeaway from 2017 has been your ability to seek or to develop cost efficiencies. Are you going to be looking to do more of that in 2018, become leaner and a bit meaner? Well, you know, our, our uh, efficiency uh, ratio is 29%, which is, you know, uh, I would say one of the best in the world. You know, I think it's a, it's a dream for many banks to achieve, you know, a 29% efficiency ratio. So we will be looking to maintain that position, you know, I mean, going forward. You know, and, and don't forget, I mean, to have other markets like, you know, uh, Turkey and Egypt and Indonesia. It will be very difficult, you know, to, to uh, you know, uh, to maintain this, this, this level. But our target is to continue to maintain this level. And we are going to be looking at it from both ways. You know, I mean, improve the revenues and, 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 and uh, the, the top line. At the same time, also, we look to, you know, to be more lean and mean, you know, in terms of like, you know, uh, cost uh, expansion. How satisfied are you with the level of U.S. dollar liquidity available in Qatar? Uh, have you had any issues there? Could it be improved? Because we've uh, heard quite a few stories that there are some challenges there. How comfortable are you with what the central bank's up to on that front? Well, you know, we're very comfortable. We didn't see any issues, you know, I mean, in terms of like the dollar liquidity here. And uh, don't forget, you know, I mean, the dollar is, is, is a backed currency to the Qatar real. So, I mean, central bank guarantees this rate. Uh, in terms of like, you know, availability, I mean, you can see our growth, you know, uh, this year, you know, it's a, it's a six, 16 percent growth in the funding side. And most of this coming, you know, as, as a dollars, you know, as far as, as KIMB is concerned. You know, we don't see, you know, really a, a huge pressure there. You know, I think what central bank is doing sometimes, they need to be very, you know, uh, what do you call it, careful in terms of like, you know, uh, making sure nobody tries to manipulate, you know, uh, the local economy or the local currency. And they, uh, this is their job, actually, doing so. But in terms of like, you know, liquidity is ample liquidity. The system here is very liquid. Uh, the banking system itself, you know, in terms of like liquidity, they grew by 16% as of November uh, results, uh, year in year uh, results. So, you know, I don't see an issue there. You know, this is, you know, uh, something business as usual as, as, as far as we are concerned. In terms of uh, bond issuances, and we saw your latest move with the Formosa bond, are you looking at any other options for 2018? We're going to see some increased activity on that front, and are you considering other currencies as well, Ali? Well, you know, this is business as usual for us. As, as, as part of our ongoing business, we continue to, to diversify our funding, and we look for opportunities in terms of, like, you know, rates, size, and the, the ac accessing, you know, the Taiwanese market was a good opportunity for us in terms of, like, you know, the size and, and the rate, you know, it's, it's a 30-year bond, 
with a very good rate, good coupon. So we will continue, we'll continue to diversify. We'll continue to look, look to, to any, any, any markets. As part of our EMTN program, we still have a huge room you know, to, to go there. We have a $17.5 billion uh, EMTN program, and we hardly use half of this uh, by now. So in terms of the road ahead, Ali, and I want to get the big picture outlook here. You said that you aren't concerned about the ongoing Gulf crisis. You're assuming it's going to last forever. So if the Gulf crisis is not what worries you, what is the biggest risk that you see for the remainder of the year for QNB? Well, I mean, I mean, uh, the normal risks that we see here, you know, I mean, the regulatory, you know, the, the pressure from the regulations, Basel IV, you know, IFRS 9, uh, uh, we see also, you know, challenges in the, in the geopolitics in general in the region itself, not, not uh, specifically in the Gulf. This is, uh, again, one of the issues. Also, the macroeconomic uh, uh, conditions, uh, as, as, as you know, that the interest rate will be increasing, so this will put pressure on the cost of fund. Also, you know, I mean, we know that the quantitative easy has stopped in the U.S., so this is, again, will put pressure on, on, on the emerging markets. So uh, again, and maybe I would say the biggest challenge we look at here is, is, the, is the war for talent, you know. Uh, being the largest institution, uh, banking, financial institution in the Middle East and Africa, I mean, there is a, uh, there is a big war for talent, you know, and for our, our job here to really, will, I mean, we'll push very hard in terms of like, you know, attracting, you know, retaining and developing talents. And this is one of the areas, and this is, I would say, one of the main reasons why we have been very successful so far. Closing question, again, last time we spoke, uh, Brent crude was at a very different level. Now, flirting with $70 a barrel. Uh, how does that change how you look at the growth potential of Q&B? Could that help with some additional deposits? The numbers speak for themselves on your balance sheet. They show that you've been able to lock in inflows. Is that going to be able to boost things a little bit more? Where are the deposits going to come from? Yes. Well, I mean, uh, as I said, you know, I mean, we are we have a, diversif a diversified book in, t in terms of funding. Uh, we have investors from uh, everywhere. I mean, Qatar, of course. I mean, this uh, is, is, is the is the biggest portion of our funding book. You know, uh, public sector, private sector. But at the same time, also we are very much diversified, and we have because of our operations, we have 31 countries. So we have access to many markets. Again, we are uh, you know uh, fueled by Qatar name, by QMB name, a strong rating. So uh, we have no issue there to access uh, you know, as many markets as possible. Ali, it was lovely speaking to you this morning. Ali al Kawiriti, Group CEO for Qatar National Bank, uh, joining us live out of Doha. Thank you again for your time. Thank you, Yusuf. Thank you very much.